The newest plug-in Panamera is quicker, faster, and more fuel efficient than its non-hybrid progenitor. Stuttgart, Germany Buying a plug-in hybrid does not mean giving up on driving excitement, at least if you elect one of Porsche's plug-ins. We've already detailed the furious performance of the Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid, but Porsche is also fitting its Panamera with a lesser-powered fuel-saving powertrain called the 4E Hybrid. It combines a bitter buck-arched V6 engine with an electric motor and lithium-ion battery pack, providing all-electric mobility while also boosting output to a healthy 462 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, gains of 132 HP and 185 lbft over the base car. Our first goal was performance, and at the same time, we wanted to improve the efficiency of the vehicle, says Jernot Dolner. Vice President of the Panamera product line. But we had a clear focus on performance. Though US economy figures haven't been finalized, the car is rated for 31 miles of all-electric driving under, often optimistic, European tests, yet it will still tear all the way to 172 miles per hour when given enough dear strict Autobahn. So, it's quicker, faster, more powerful, and also more fuel efficient than the standard Panamera. And you thought hybrid cars were boring. It's still fun to drive. Whether operating as a hybrid or in full bore sport and mode, the Panamera is an absolute joy on everything from winding country roads to speed limit free autobahns. A huge well of power awaits at just the merest nudge of your toe. The sprint to 60 miles per hour clocks in at just 4.4 seconds, which is, by the way, as quick as Porsche's 718 Boxster S and Cayman S. That's also down by 0.8 second compared to the regular Panamera 4. Buttoned down air suspension and quick, unerringly precise steering only improve the sensation. Seamless transitions. Unless you pay a lot of attention to the power flow map on the infotainment system or the giant analog tachometer, it's tough to tell which power source is being used. That's a good thing. The Panamera's powertrain makes no fuss about charging, using the battery, or combining the battery and engine for optimum power and efficiency. It just works, simply, smoothly, and quietly. Captivating cabin. A crisp, wide touch screen. A sleek console with capacitive touch buttons. Snug seats in gorgeous red leather. Impeccable wind and road noise insulation. Simply put, the inside of the new Panamera is beautiful to behold, fantastic to operate, and a wonderful place to spend time, whether as a driver or as a passenger. It's efficient. Again, US figures aren't ready, but the Panamera 4E hybrid can easily cover a short distances on electrical power alone. You might be able to commute to work without using a drop of gas, for instance, but still have the Bitterbo V6 on hand in case you want to take the long way home to blow off some steam. And even when the battery charge is depleted and the car operates as a traditional hybrid, expect it to be relatively easy on gas. Junk in the trunk. As is the case with any plug-in hybrid, the 4E hybrid gains a fair bit of weight compared to its non-hybrid model. Porsche says the hybrid componentry, battery, motor, etc., adds 595 pounds. The upshot is that the added mass of the trunk-mounted lithium-ion pack actually improves weight distribution, shifting it to 49% front, 51% rear. That's far more rear bias than non-hybrid Panameras, which can pay dividends for handling. Flashing lights. Like many hybrids, this Panamera induces its pilot to drive efficiently by way of various indicators for whether the battery is charging or being discharged. Yet in the 4E hybrid, that's done by way of bright green LEDs arranged at the bottom of the tachometer. They look out of place in the otherwise ultra-sleek, ultra-modern cabin, and for the first few miles behind the wheel I found their constant blinking distracting. Mode Overload it's handy to be able to pick just how the Panamera will balance its use of the electric motor and gasoline engine, but this 4E hybrid feels like it offers more choices than I'd ever conceivably need. With e-power, hybrid auto, e-hold, e-charge, sport, and sport plus to choose from, 
as well as three settings for the air suspension and a sport mode for the dual clutch gearbox, there are more configurations possible than I really want. Surprise, Porsche's fast wagon is a hoot and a half. Victoria, Canada. Tall trees and green grass flank either side of an empty, winding, sun-soaked road in British Columbia. Behind the wheel of the Porsche Panamera Turbo, these lush surroundings seem to fly by at warp speed. The Bitterbo V8 roars as it sends massive power to all four wheels, and I'm tossing this Panamera through corners like it's a 911, smiling and laughing maniacally, manhandling this big Porsche with generous chutzpah. Indeed, these words could be plucked straight from my recent review of the Panamera Turbo. But this time around, I've got an extra reason to giggle. This isn't just any Panamera, it's the Sport Turismo. The wagon. The 550 horsepower, 567 pound-feet Porsche station wagon. And holy crap, it's purple. 2018 Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo, first drive the best thing about the new Sport Turismo, aside from, you know, wagon, is that none of the intrinsic Panamera Ness is lost in the reshaping of its rump. From the B-pillar forward, the Turismo is identical to the standard Panamera, and the butt lift only adds 88 pounds that, I promise, you cannot feel from behind the wheel. Switch the drive mode to Sport Plus, mash the throttle, and 60 miles per hour arrives in the same 3.4 seconds as the standard Panamera Turbo, when fitted with Porsche's Sport Chrono package. All-wheel drive is standard across the Sport Turismo range, which means no rear-end skittishness under hard launches, or any funny business from that reshaped tail during fast cornering. Every single compliment I can give to the normal Panamera Turbo applies to the Sport Turismo. The steering is brilliant, with great levels of both weight and feedback that inspire incredible confidence as I push the wagon harder and harder down unfamiliar Canadian roads. Whether on the standard 20-inch wheels or the optional 21s, the ride quality is superb, with enough cushion to reduce jarring impacts on broken pavement, but great amounts of stiffness to eliminate body roll or any wafting tendencies. You could drive this thing clear across Canada and never experience discomfort. For as tactile and agile as the Turbo Sport Turismo is on great back roads, it is still an exemplary Grand Tourator. If the 550HP, $154,000 turbo version isn't your thing, Porsche will happily sell you less powerful, and less expensive, versions of the Sport Turismo. The base Panamera 4 uses the company's Bitterbo 3.0 liter V6 with 330 HP, the 4s gets the 2.9 liter Bitterbo V6 from the Audi RS5 and UPS the Anti to 440 HP, and the 4E hybrid straps a big electric motor to that 2.9 liter V6 for a total system output of 462 HP. A brief stint in the E hybrid reveals it to be a particularly interesting choice. What I love most is the stark Jekyll and Hyde contrast between the two ends of the E hybrid's driving spectrum. On one hand, you can effortlessly cruise under full F power for up to 31 miles but turn the drive mode switch on the steering wheel one click to the left, and Sport Plus mode lights a fire under the hood. The engine powers on with full force, the throttle response sharpens, the exhaust opens up. Earn quiet applause from your echo-minded colleagues as you silently start up your electrified Panamera, and then yell just kidding, suck aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
with two or three abreast seating configurations available. With the back seats up, you're treated to 18.3 cubic feet of storage space, which isn't even one more cubic foot than the standard Panamera. Even with the seats folded, cargo space only grows by 3 cubic feet, 46 for the hatchback, 49 for the wagon. That's plenty of room for lots of luggage or several homes worth of groceries, but if you're eyeing the Sport Turismo solely for its practicality, maybe try the Cayenne instead. Of course, if you're eyeing the Sport Turismo for its shape and panache, I can't say I blame you. This thing looks killer from all angles, with a sleek long roof shape, wide rear haunches, and a rear end devoid of an enormous, retractable wing. That said, there is a retractable spoiler built into the, uh, spoiler, but it only activates at very high speeds or when the panoramic sunroof is fully open, to aid with aerodynamics. It's like a cute little aero flap, and nothing more. Everything else is carryover Panamera stuff, right down to the interior materials and onboard technology. You get the full cockpit experience from the regular Panamera, complete with 12.3 inch touchscreen for the Porsche communication management infotainment system, as well as the flat touch surface panel that surrounds the petite shifter for the 8-sped dual clutch transmission. Rear occupants are treated to PCM touchscreens mounted to the front seats, and if you opt for the four-passenger layout, there are more controls and storage cubbies in the console that runs between the two rear chairs. As far as I'm concerned, there are only three reasons why you'd buy a normal Panamera instead of the Sport Turismo. 1. You want the base, two-wheel drive model. 2. You want to spend $200,000 on the 680 HP Turbo SE Hybrid that isn't available as a Sport Turismo, which I've also driven, stay tuned, or 3, you hate things that are cool. The added cost of the Sport Turismo is between $4,000 and $6,000, depending on model, with the base Panamera 4 starting at $96,200. And, come on. If you're already going to spend upwards of $100,000 on one of these, what's an extra five grand for something that's a little more functional and a lot more interesting? Besides, it's not like weird Porsche wagons are a dime a dozen, this is a car that exists not because it has to, but because it can. It's a thrill to drive and something elegant to behold. It is the pure essence of the already fantastic Panamera, with more room for the life you bring along. Hybrid hatchback with 680 horsepower? That's so Porsche. Victoria, Canada. Like it or not, electrification is the way of the future. But it's not just about soul-sucking hybrids like the Toyota Prius, or EVs that can only go so far. Several automakers are using electricity to offer supplemental power, making fast cars even faster. Drool-worthy supercars like the Acura NSX, LaFerrari, and McLaren P1 all use electric assist, not to mention Porsche's own 918 Spyder. In fact, the hybrid tech found in the 918 is what brings me to the car you see here, the incredibly powerful Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid. For the first time, Porsche is positioning a hybrid model as the flagship of its range, no other Panamera bests the Turbo SE Hybrid in terms of power, or price. With 680 horsepower and 626 pound-feet of torque, this certainly isn't your traditional hybrid car. But if this is what Porsche's vision of the electrified future looks like, then I, for one, welcome our new hybrid overlords. Wait, how much power? Batteries on their own are only good for so much juice. And while most automakers combine this electric power with a small, efficient engine, Porsche goes the other route. On its own, the Viterbo 4.0-liter V8, the one from the Panamera Turbo, makes 550 HP and 567 lbft. To that, Porsche adds a 14.1 kWh lithium-ion battery, and a motor good for 136 HP and 295 lbft. So yes, this is a hybrid with Hellcat levels of output, able to sprint to 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds and reach a top speed of 192 miles per hour. Screw your Prius, 
This is electric thrust I can get behind. Best of both worlds. The Turbo SE Hybrid isn't an always on monster. Dial the drive setting to e-power and you can run on only electricity for up to 31 miles. Leave it in the default hybrid setting, and the engine will mix turbo gas power and air thrust as needed, smoothly and effortlessly. Or to hell with it all, click over to Sport Plus mode and have max power available at all times. Mash the throttle and this thing is a rocket, it's not just the initial acceleration that's impressive, the 50-80 mph run is suck you into the seat quick. Drives like a Porsche. If you've read my recent reviews of the Turbo Hatchback and Sport Turismo, you know I love the way the Panamera goes about its business. None of that is lost in the Turbo SE Hybrid, with great steering, oodles of oomph, and wonderful balance, even in this heaviest, 5,093 pound, example of the Panamera. After a long drive on both road and track, it's clear the Turbo SE Hybrid is a true performer. It grips for days, roars like the non-hybrid turbo, and goes like hell. Comes with everything. Granted, it ought to, considering the $184,400 starting price. But it's nice to see Porsche treating its flagship Panamera as such. Porsche, the king of a Lockhart options, throws everything at the Turbo SE Hybrid, carbon ceramic brakes, rear axle steering, the Sport Chrono Kit, 21-inch wheels, full leather interior, upgraded sound system, and more are all standard. You won't have to pour over the options list to get a nicely equipped example of this Panamera. Weird brakes. This is the one issue I have with the driving experience. In all driving modes, there's a weird mushiness to the brake pedal with soft initial bite, like you have to push through a sponge to get to the meat of the carbon ceramic stopping power. It's largely because of the regenerative braking, I know, but it's a noticeable demerit in an otherwise brilliantly driving machine. Choose your paint wisely. This is a nitpick, but one worth mentioning, those neon green accents come on every Turbo SE Hybrid, regardless of exterior color. That's fine if you get white, black, or bright blue like you see here. But on a beige-ish color, like this chalk hue, those colors can really clash. Who's it for? I understand a lot of people will buy this car simply because it's the best, the range-topping Panamera. But honestly, good as it is to drive, I'd rather just have the turbo most of the time. It's barely slower, offers all the same performance and luxury amenities, and is so, so, so good to drive. Even if you like the idea of a hybrid, try the Panamera 4E Hybrid, which mates the same battery and motor to a 2.9-liter Viterbo V6. It's still a ton of fun, with 462 total horsepower, and it's $85,000 cheaper. Plus, you can get the Turbo and 4E Hybrid in ultra-cool Sport Turismo guys. For now, anyway, the Turbo SE Hybrid can't be had as a wagon. Sorry, Luftgekultists, but you can't survive on air alone. Water is essential to life. Despite airhead fanatics' fervent belief the Porsche 911 blinked out of existence in the late 90s when the water-cooled 996 was announced for the following year. For the faithful, the annual Luftgekult gathering is Nirvana a place where anyone with a radiator is forbidden. Even before this year's Luft gathering in Long Beach, California, began, we'd had enough of the gaseous windbagging coming from certain corners of Porsche -dom. Someone needs to proselytize for the WA Surgicult. I had a hunch about where to start, so I hopped in a 2017 Porsche 911 Turbo and visited the 2017 California Festival of Speed. My pulpit of choice is the crown jewel of the 911 family. There are more capable and exclusive 911s, but the Turbo is the vessel Stuttgart imbues with its latest technology and hardware. It's a testament to what the rear-engine 911 formula is capable of, 
and the perfect way to offset the Lutke cult fanaticism. The California Festival of Speed is a Porsche Club of America gathering that's blessed SoCal for 16 years, 12 more than Luft. It's held in the infield of Fontana's Auto Club Speedway, so there's plenty of room for exercise. But the Friday night before the festival weekend, I took the Black Turbo for a midnight cruise. Deserted LA warehouse roads and empty on-ramps were host to initial calisthenics, but the foggy Pacific Coast Highway was the goal. It wasn't long before the 3.8-liter twin-turbocharged flat-6 rendered me breathless, thanks to 540 HP and 486 LBFT of torque. The 7-speed PDK routes power to all four wheels, allowing the 3,5-16 pound car to hit 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. A full throttle launch up and on ramp was like getting flicked across LA County by a giant. It's a perfect watch this car, where passengers and driver alike are reduced to giggles with each seamless overtake. Similar speed is available in an Audi R8 or McLaren 570s, but they lack the insta-torque shotgun kick of the all-wheel drive turbo. Other supercars feel ferocious standing still, whereas the tremendous force of the 911 comes as almost a surprise. It's relatively quiet, effortlessly comfortable, and absolutely usable on a daily basis, while packing the same kind of straight-line hustle reserved for bottle rockets. I awoke the next morning facing a 60-mile jaunt to Fontana. Halfway there I met up with a friend in his 996 Carrera and set off toward the speedway. In traffic, the turbo was calm, its ability to remain quiet and comfortable while still offering staggering capability is second to none for the price. I turned into the speedway amidst a long train of late model Porsches, BMWs, and Mercedes. I snaked through the infield, eventually landing in a massive parking lot reserved for attending Porsche owners. The midnight dark turbo was lost in a curvaceous sea of black, white, red, yellow, and blue 911s, mostly from the water-cooled era. But regarding the participating Porsches, my suspicions were correct. As I've seen at numerous past track days and SCCA events, most of the Porsches flogged out on the infield track were from the 996 and 997 generations. There was a contingent of air-cooled cars on track, but they were hopelessly outnumbered by the water pumpers. In part, this impressive 996-997-991 turnout is the two-prong result of the ballooning cost of entry for air-cooled cars and the inherent robustness of the modern 911. Stock for stock, an unmodified 996 is better prepared for track work than a standard 911 from the 70s, 80s, or even the early 90s. Parts are still in fresh supply, as are replacement trim and tires. They're safer, easier to drive, and easier to live with than the older cars. The Loop Pickle crowd doesn't want to hear it, but the cars they covet show their age. The newest of those cars is rapidly approaching the quarter century mark. The vintage 911 aftermarket scene is blossoming but affordable OEM quality parts are getting harder to find, especially in the case of dashboards, target tops, and transmission components. For many, the relatively affordable cost of entry, along with better day-to-day -day usability, makes the water-cooled 911s, and Boxsters and Caymans, a better purchase than a Ratty, leaky 911 SC. By noon, I'd had my fill of the FOS. I hopped in the 911 and wound my way to the San Gabriel Mountains, 
where I began the ascent at the base of Glendora Mountain Road. As the Porsche cut through the mountainside, I dialed the turbo suspension and PDK transmission to their most aggressive setting. GMR is a tricky bit of road, but no prayer was necessary. Rear wheel steering allowed it to change direction quickly, and the all-wheel drive system lent unshakable solidity that allowed me to carry tremendous speed through tight corners. Porsche made sure all drive systems were on pace with the orbital thrust of the 3.8-liter, including massive 15-inch rotors in both the front and rear that were clamped by 6 and 4 piston calipers, respectively. Halfway through the route, the speed became ritual. Explode toward the next corner, haul it back down beneath three digits, turn in, feed a little power, explode mid-exit, repeat. The turbo was so approachable, so effortless on canyon roads, I wondered why I would buy anything else for daily use, provided my bank account was as fat as the 3.8 liter S torque curve dot that's the crux of it. For a fast, comfortable daily runabout, the 991.2 turbo is about as good as it gets. It's a do everything, go anywhere cocoon of speed I have the confidence in taking across the country without fear of breaking down or attracting any undue attention. Don't listen to the hype. Air cooled 911s aren't the end all, be all of the Porsche gospel. I did things in the 991.2 I wouldn't have dreamed of doing in my 81 Targa. If you want to join the look party, go pick up a 75 83 911 before you're priced out of the market. If you want an effortlessly usable and still very, very 911 experience without the headache, members of the WA Surgical are always looking for new acolytes. Why shouldn't the top make and look ready for the track? During a recent media program in Singapore, Porsche showed off a special make and turbo with the performance package and unique Porsche Motorsport themed livery. The mixture of black, red, silver, and white along the body is reminiscent of the color scheme that Porsche uses on the 919 Hybrid and 911 RSR. It's a neat idea to paint the range topping make and like a racer, but this livery is somewhat boring. We would like to see the little crossover in the famous Gulf design or maybe in Jagermeister's burnt orange. The Macon Turbo with the performance pack is the hottest variant of the crossover yet. It's bitter both 3.6 liter V6 packs 440 horsepower, 324 kilowatts, and 442 pound feet, 600 newton meters, which is by 40 HP, 29 kilowatts, and 36 lbft. 49 nm, better than the standard turbo. The extra output shaves the sprint to 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, to 4.2 seconds, 0.2 seconds quicker than usual. Top speed also jumps 5 miles per hour, 8 kilometers per hour, to 169 miles per hour, 272 kilometers per hour. Dot in addition to the extra engine output. 
the performance pack improves the Macon's capabilities in other ways. The front brakes feature 15.3 inch, 390 mm discs, an increase of 1.1 inches, 30 mm, and red painted brake 6 piston calipers. The air suspension sits 0.4 inches, 10 mm, lower. The Sport Chrono package and a new exhaust system come with these upgrades, two dot in the United States, the Macon Turbo with the performance package sells for $88,750 after destination, about $10,000 more than standard turbo. For customers who want a more aggressive look but without the performance upgrade, Porsche also recently introduced the turbo exterior package for the Macon Turbo. It adds gloss black 21-inch wheels similar to the pieces on the 911 Turbo and adaptive LED headlights. Inside, there are Alcantara accents, carbon trim, and illuminated door sill guards. Thank you